For us, it was um, mediation after mediation. We we're talking together. I mean, how can it be that 28 million people don't have a place to lay their heads every night? And it now makes you wonder, how can I be at peace when fellow Nigerians are having major challenges such as a housing crisis? In our background feature yesterday, Francis tackled the housing crisis in Nigeria with a town planner, Barnabas, and uh, engineer Oriacle. Their focus was uh, that environmental challenges, insecurity, inability of government to complete infrastructural development are major causes why 28 million people do not have homes to call their own today. He takes a new dimension as he talks with Emmanuel Wiki, real estate um, person as well as a surveyor and he's talking about bringing a lasting solution and he says PPP private public partnership can be brought to the front burner at this time. Francis what else did you find? Housing is widely recognized as a human right yet Nigeria's low-income households in particular struggle when it comes to finding adequate shelter that does not leave them in financial difficulty. In 1991, for instance, the government rolled out housing for all by the year 2000. Unfortunately, adequate housing supply remained a mirage. In 2006, government again created the National Housing Policy, but the challenge still remains. And in 2013, the government commissioned the Nigerian Mortgage Refinance Company with the public purpose of promoting home ownership for Nigerians. The housing policies that we have been uh, uh, nothing before now tends towards a particular sectors of the a particular sect of the of the, of the population and that is the high income people we should develop a housing policy that will be encompassing so what the policies all these policies that have been doing is that the government want to participate fully in providing houses for the population of Nigeria which might not be easy for them to carry as a result of the global housing deficit, the United Nations advocated for the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goal 11, which was targeted to capture holistic perspective of the housing sector, with a view to achieving quality and affordable housing unit for all by 2030. Quality housing enhances the health and welfare of man and contributes immensely to its productivity, thus underscoring its importance as a fundamental need. But the question begging for answer is, how affordable is affordable housing? Whom are you providing the affordable houses for? Is it for the low income? Is it for the middle income? Is it for the high income people? Now, if it is for the low income people and you say affordable, how much is their salary? And how much is their housing allowance? Parano. Affordable houses means that you should not spend more than 20 to 30 percent of your income on housing. Now, if the cost of development is high, what it means is that those that are going to take those properties to rent them or to buy will also be high. Look at the cost of cement. How many, how many uh, people do we, how many producers do we have in Nigeria? Not more than one or two. Was that what we had in, in the early 80s? No. In my own state, River State, we had Ego Cement. We had Ibeto Cement. We had Dangote's, uh, which others, about three or four. Today, we have only, in, in particular, you can only see Dangote cement. So it's like a monopolistic market. So we should be able to develop our own raw materials so that at the end of the day, the cost of 
building, uh, the cost of uh, developing uh, 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 houses will be low. Housing delivery in Nigeria is provided by either the government or private sector. But despite federal government access to factors of housing production, the country could at best expect 4.2% of the annual requirement. Substantial contribution is expected from other public and private sectors. The government should be able to encourage the private sector to invest into the housing sector. And that is where a lot of people talk about uh, public-private practice partnership. Because the government cannot do it alone. And without the government policies, the private sector can also not do it alone. So the government needs to provide an enabling environment to enable to, for the private sector to actually invest in, in those, in those, uh, in those sectors. Housing deficit, when left unabated, could lead to increase in crime and other social vices. Therefore, all hands must be on deck towards curbing this challenge. Let us look at the housing policy. Let us look at the Land Use Act. Is it possible for us to uh, uh, amend it? And let us have access to this particular, uh, uh, let us have a better access to land for development. Number three is for us to look at the mortgage system. Our focus on Weekend Deal today will be Empowering Families, Solutions to Nigeria's Housing Crisis. It's our hope that with your support on the program today, because you know Weekend Deal is interactive, as you share your experiences and follow the conversation, we will together look towards positively solutions that will be long-lasting and will have the best positive impact on Nigeria's 28 million is huge. And from what I'm hearing from Dr. Mrs. Julie Onoviona today, a real estate expert, she says it may be more than that. Welcome to Weekend Deal. Thank you. We also have Emmanuel Udwebunam. He is a legal practitioner. He's here to lend his voice to this conversation. Welcome to Weekend Thank Deal. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. 28 million people. You know, that's the justice here. But we know about how we collect um, data here yes. and how research goes. We know what people, you know, reserve. So when Dr. Mrs. Julie said it may be more than that, who are we to argue? But that's the number we find and we say it's large. You have been following a conversation from yesterday. We, I, we, we identified the challenges. Some people told us about why we are where we are today. We looked at what government has done so far. We looked at the private sector. We looked at the people, us, those who don't have the homes, and those who have many homes. There were also options preferred. Some said we should look to a mass timber. We should look to containers. Some said we should look to the earth to build houses. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Lend your voice, empowering families, so that we can eradicate, reduce the challenge of housing in Nigeria. Well, um, let me start by saying that the problem of housing is such that that has been there for a long time. With all the government promises, with all the the issue of pro public private partnership or private public partnership, yet we are still where we are. The problem is implementation. The policies are the, the, the policies that the government additional are they the right policies that will see to the need of solving the housing problem in Nigeria? I don't think they are getting it right. Uh, How can uh, you if I may comment? Yes. The policy, there's something wrong with the policies. The problem is proper implementation, implementation of the policies. policies. You discover that government has promised several times to give houses to the people. Yes. But have they given the houses? Yeah. What must we do? We're talking now about the, 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 the challenges are there. We don't want to point so many fingers now. What are the lasting solutions we can bring to the table? Now, you talk about mortgage. We, yes. we do know it's a viable option. But how ought it to work? When we went cross river yesterday, we did learn that with a partnership between the state government and the federal government, 100 housing units have been provided and wow. nine local government areas were to benefit. Somebody wow. here, um, the engineer that was here said, too small. Too small. Too, 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 too small yeah, indeed. Yes. Too so small. what compared to, to the be? number of people that are in need of houses? houses. Yes, and those who will not and, get. And the government should Another try solution. and remove the bottlenecks. Okay. Yes. For instance, even if you are going for mortgage now, before you have access to, if you, if you are not connected 
to the top mm. is very, very it's difficult. Very difficult. Mm. So government should make sure they remove that bottleneck of, you know, creating a free environment for everybody to have access to mortgage. Aside from that, the interest rate. If the interest rate is too high, it may be another problem. Mm. So government should subsidize by reducing the interest rates for the common so that everybody those who work those who earn like us yeah will be able to because we heard also that the land is not the issue is the building we have vast it. land okay, let me also add that the, the the government can as well encourage and promote the production of local building materials, uh, materials, materials. in nigeria now we know that you need to move fast Think big, yes. start something, set your hand to it, complete it. Complete but let's it. go to um, Abuja. NT Abuja has been doing some research within uh, uh, the, uh, the FCT here. And we, we're, we're getting to learn that many people are living in satellite towns when they ought to be in the city. They are saying we work in the city, but we have to live like two, three hours away and we travel down on the daily. Well, one of our guests here said yesterday that it's those who live in town, who wake up at 11 a.m. or noon, who should move to the satellite towns. We also have a lawyer who is telling tenants that they have a right, and even the Nigerians themselves, that everyone has a right to a roof. Mm -hmm. They will take it from here. How can you be owing me house rent? I am your landlord. <laughs> It is a well-known fact that searching for an apartment in Nigeria is an overwhelming and difficult task. Despite an already existing law that provides for certain rules and regulation that must be complied with in matters involving rent. Most times you find out that um, the tenant and the landlord have issues, they go to court, they get injunction, and uh, before you know, um, the landlord will talk about ejection if giving like two weeks notice one week notice these are things that are not even proper those who really need to live in the city center are forced to go and stay in satellite and because of the amount of rent the rent is too high in abuja and that's just the truth about the matter for any responsible government they should think about regulations and um, laws and policies that will make it easy for people to live in the city where they work the main legislation that regulates rent transaction in nigeria is the Land Use Act of 1979 that falls under the qualification for a valid rent agreement in Nigeria. The rental market in Nigeria is on the increase. The economy is one of the factors that is making the rental market to be large. That is number one. Number two is people are coming from the rural areas into town. I, that will force me to lease a property. And you know, the issue of demand and supply will now come in. When you are having more demands, the supply will be shrinking. When the supplies are shrinking, that means the cost of getting that demand will be on the high. So exploitation is across board in this country. It is important that we regulate our rents. I think only in Lagos, that we have had issues with respect to rent regulation. It applies to places like Ikoyi, Apapa, excluding other areas. So that regulation takes care of how the landlord will just wake up and begin to take advantage or to jack up the rent of his property at will without taking cognizance or consideration to the economic powers of the tenants. We have what we call Rent Restriction Act in our legislation. It's a federal law. It's a federal legislation. And that thing is trying to regulate how a landlord will fix the rent over his property. We have them in the books of the law. We do not apply them mutatis mutandis. What I mean by that is that those laws will not be active in the books, except if you regulate them. Or a state may also do a law which will apply in that scheme. But Abuja has not made any law to that effect. Now, a rent house to be. Immediately he collects the rent 
of that house. He loses the possession of that property. He cannot just come at will. Anytime he can come at will. He, I, a must give a letter to the B before he could be allowed into the property. Because B is more or less having the possessory right, which is, in this case, potent. It's potent than even ownership. Before he jacks up, if you are a sitting tenant, what you will do is, he will send you a notice. I have intention of raising the rent of my house because of A, B, Z reasons. The tenant has also the right to say, okay, let us begin. Bargaining power of the tenant will force the rent regime down. The tenant doesn't have any right to take him to the court. The only way that he can make him to take the landlord to the court is when the landlord goes overboard. Say he charges 50% or 100%. I can say, landlord, you didn't do well. And if it is, if that is the reason why you want to take your property from me, I have the right to tell the court that that type of uh, um, increase in the rent is excessive, is in humor. I will tear the dog into pieces. This boy. The relationship between a landlord and a tenant is one which gives rights and obligation to both parties, which is equally related by law. The tenant has rights. Once you pay your rent, you can sit comfortably in your house and uh, your landlord must approach you with respect and high regard. <laughs> Does yes. that happen often? We just saw a tenant sending a dog after a landlord. landlord. Is that really the reality on ground? Well, it, 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 it do happen that way. But uh, looking at that very video that played out, the landlord was harassing the tenant. If a tenant has failed to pay rent, the law has stipulated what he should do. In fact, by virtue of Section 44 of the Tenancy Law of Lagos State, which I must say that the Tenancy Law of Lagos State is like a model that goes beyond as against other states. Mm. That section 44 provides that a situation, a landlord cannot lock up your house. Mm. A landlord cannot demolish your, 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 your rented apartment. Mm. A landlord cannot even harass you or intimidate you. Mm. And for doing that alone, the landlord will be committing an offense. When you have, but, paid but you, when know, you have not paid. When you, when, when you, sometimes when, when we have not paid, we, know we tend to be more planned. You know, we, we, are, put, we are the no, ones who now no, but are submissive. The, but there, yeah, you are submissive, but there are instances, despite your submissiveness, mm. the landlord still comes, they take off your roof. And that mm. is the, the reason is because the, the tenants don't know their rights. Mm. That is the point. So we, the, the tenants need to know the rights, you know, their rights. The so we know we have rights, but yeah. rights within what? Like if you get into a house, you've, the agreement is that you will pay your rent annually. Or monthly when you fail at what point does the landlord's um, authority now supersede the tenant's rights? You know rights? most times when you enter into a house they give you an agreement mm. you sign most people don't take time to, to read, read the through. details. Yes exactly. They don't read what they are after I just quickly, uh, sign. quickly sign and, and that's pay. all. No. So at the end of the day mm. they are under the, the mercy of the landlord. The, the, the mercy, mercy of, of the landlord. landlord. Yes. The nitty gritty that supposed to have been taken care of was not done. Yes, well, that, that brings me to the issue legal, again. Uh, yes. a legal uh, expert, like when what usually is in that paper that we don't read, we just hurry and sign and quickly send it back. There are so many clauses in that very tenancy agreement. And first and foremost, I will advise any tenant, unless you have legal background, do not sign. Mm. In fact, if you have finished negotiating the rent price of a house that you want to take on with a landlord or his agent, ask them for a draft tenancy agreement first. Don't be in a hurry to make payment. If you are in a while hurry... While you are out of the house or while you are in the house? No, while you are about to about take the house. Okay, when you haven't moved in. That is the problem. If you, 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 you only realize your mistake when you are in a hurry to pay rent and sign an agreement. So but, by the time do, you, do you know it doesn't apply to rent a loan, even when you are collecting loans from the bank. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't take time to read. 
And you know, bank, they hide a lot of things yes. 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 which are not so transparent to us. It's at the end of the day, you start seeing deductions from your account. Ah, why is this? Why is this? But by we didn't take time we didn't to take read. Time exactly. to so to those things the in the clauses, in that very tenancy ag agreement, could be rent review. Hmm. Now, the, the, the issue of a landlord coming to say, oh, for a sitting tenant, I'm increasing your rent. The landlord shouldn't take you by surprise. He has every right to increase his okay. rent, but it shouldn't be outrageous. Or it shouldn't be sudden. It shouldn't be sudden. It, it, it is not a situation where your rent, on the eve of the expiration of your rent, which is when I mean by eve, that is the last day of your rent. The next thing is the landlord comes knocking or sends his agent with a letter of notice of rent increment hmm. to tell you that, oh, your new rent, you are now going to pay one million as against 800,000. That is taking you on our way. And it leaves little room for deliberation. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Mrs. Julie, we're telling us something. Like sometimes there's quick notice. It can be prevalent in, an, um, in Abuja. But I've never heard about it. Uh, yeah, well, I'm in a property presently. Uh, when we entered the place about four years ago, we were paying about 1.8 million naira. But suddenly, uh, six months ago, they gave everybody quick notice to quit the the property without and we, paying did he want you to we we we, uh, we are not owing any rent okay but they said they don't want to renew the rent again so later we discover that some people that have been there for quite some time are paying less than what we the new uh, tenants are paying okay. so because of that they wanted everybody to quit the uh, property. property property and now Upscale, yes. <laughs> well, it's getting very interesting. I would say then uh, we have a very magnanimous uh, landlord. For the last um, almost a decade, he has not increased rent, and uh, he listens to plea. In this Abuja, I'm yes. Sure, I'm very he sure after the program, please. you will get a, a letter of uh, notice of increment. Please, he listens to please. No, I know he wouldn't do that. Well, we're going to Lokoja, where there's a lot of talk about rural to urban migration. Many say that the gap between the federal, state, and the local government is large. It's so huge. The disparity is so much that there's little infrastructural development in the communities, in the local government areas, such that youths who want to succeed, who want to who want to be relevant, who want to be useful to society, move to the urban areas so that they can get good jobs and hopefully good housing. And the rate of the migration is now impacting in the cities such that uh, we are unable to cater for them adequately. Perhaps that's one reason why there's continuous increase in people who do not have homes in urban centers. But let's go to Lukoja where they will tell us more about what their research thrust up. Every day, Nigeria faces the grim reality of its citizens leaving the country in search of better opportunities abroad. However, notwithstanding the situation within the country, rural migrants continuously flock to urban areas, exacerbating the already strained population. The rapid growth of the population and urbanization has created a stark disparity between the demand and supply of housing. There are so many reasons for shortage of housing in Nigeria. Uh, one, uh, failure on government policy. Two, uh, rural urban migration. Uh, three, hunting for jobs. Uh, four, uh, people's mentality. Uh, let me dwell on the rural urban migration. You see, uh, people tend to feel that it is a, there's a greener spatial somewhere in the city uh, without taking uh, those things that, like housing uh, into consideration. Okay, I come to the city so that I can have a more good of living. Uh, Increasement in my daily income so that I can extend, so that uh, I will, my family will have um, uh, also good living. This disparity has led to skyrocketing rent prices, inflated costs of building materials, and limited options for those aspiring to become homeowners. The economic situation of the country is not good for us to, as a, to get to own a house because of the state of the capital. And the expenses as well. 
So the the building materials is at a high cost and there's no work for the youth. The landscape of Lokoja is a challenge and the cost of incurring a, a land for building is another challenge. And after even incurring a land, the process is involved to get C of O of such land is another challenge. And as well, the cost of building. Kogi State, along with its capital, Lokoja, is not exempt from the housing challenges caused by migration, recurrent flooding, and non-sustainability of housing policies. These factors have contributed to a significant housing deficit in the region. Everybody needs a house. That, that millionaire needs a house. Also the poor person needs a house. No matter the quality, you cannot sleep outside. So nobody should tell us ordinarily. If you look at there is a lot of housing deficit in Kogi State. It's the local government. Since 1991, the Nigerian government has introduced various housing policies aimed at empowering families and addressing the housing crisis. The national housing policy in particular encompasses the National Housing Fund, which seeks to improve the lives of Nigerians by providing decent, safe and affordable accommodation. The state government thought it wise to go into partnership with federal government in order to allow the civil servants to have access to mortgage loan. And these loans are very, it's what we call housing loan, renting loan, and renovation loan. The housing challenges, including migration, flooding, and unsustainable policies may persist in Kogi State and other Nigerian cities unless the government and private sector investors take deliberate steps to implement effective housing policies and advocate for the provision of safe, affordable and comfortable housing for Nigerian families. Safe, affordable and comfortable housing for Nigerian families. That's interesting. They also mentioned policies alongside many solutions and many challenges as well. When we're talking earlier, you said the, the, the some policies are challenging. She said the policies are not the problem, it's the implementation. Well, back to that, now about the mortgage solution. But before we get there, Someone, there was also a mention about building materials, yes. the continuous um, increase. 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 The price continues then to skyrocket. Then the quality of what we're even buying. Right. We have uh, issues of houses that <coughs> collapse. On their own just, you know, say goodbye after yes. the owner has spent millions on them. We also have cases where natural disasters are usurping people mm. from their homes and making them completely homeless. And before that, we're talking about the right of the tenant, the right of the landlord. Ownership is not. Um, an opportunity to bully people mm -hmm. even though we're renting from you will have a right yes. so just let's wrap up on the tenancy issue and then let's know, let's dive quickly into what we heard um, um, from Lukoja. all right as a tenant your your right is always protected by the law the issue of notice you're entitled to quit notices and when a notice is served Please, I advise tenants, always be open to accept and acknowledge. Because without accepting that notice, you won't even know what the landlord is, is asking or saying. Before. before I ask Mr. Uh, Dr. Julie a question, I want to ask you something that uh, somebody sent to us. They said, what if the, um, the, the, the information from the tenant is audio, is verbal, is verbal. Is recorded on other the than writing. or in any other... Uh, you know, yeah, that, that could also suffice. Would that serve in a court of law? Yes, of course. Okay. It will also suffice in a court what of law. What if I change my voice before? Well, <laughs> I crack it up. By the time you are put under cross <laughs> examination, you, 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 uh, how do I put it? You reformat. <laughs> the truth will come, will come to out. light. Yes. In other words, you know, mm. that I'm cheating or that I'm lying. Exactly. Will be, the court will, will definitely know. All, yes. Known to all. Um, you, you own a property. Yeah. properties in fact but you've also <clears throat> had costs to rent for business um 
What would you say obtain CMO often? Do the laws or policies favor the tenants or the landlords? Uh, most often, it favors the landlord. Like the property, uh, property I just mentioned, they have a lot of rules and regulations uh, they put on grant for the tenants. But is that wrong? Uh, it, it, most of them are not even comfortable. Okay, Number, uh, the first one is don't use your personal generator. Mm. Even when <coughs> the uh, NEPA is not there, and they are not ready to provide the generator, generator for, 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 for everybody. The dedicated generator. Dedicated for. generator. So it's a problem. Because without light, you can't do Anything. any successful Anything. business in Nigeria. So most often, it favors the, 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 the landlord. landlord. The, the but on that, on that as well, there is no way a tenant would have moved into a such property, whether it is for residential purpose or commercial purpose, without that being... It stated, document. it's documented. Most it's times, it's stated it, in the they, they will do document. document it. They will tell you they're going to do this, provide this, provide this, provide that. But at the end of the day, time, they don't do it. Doesn't the, yes, happen. it doesn't then that happen. is when the right of the tenant comes up. Let's take more messages. There are quite a number here. Adebayo, you didn't tell us where you are reaching us from. It says, the elephant in the room is the very high cost of land acquisition and building materials. Mm -hmm. He's reiterating what mm -hmm. we're saying here. He said, government must be intentional That's about it. providing housing. Mm -hmm. The demand is galloping and the supply is practically non-existent. Public-private participation yeah. is the only way out only as way government out. has a paucity of funds. That means government has a lack of funds. In other words, government cannot do everything. So we need to bring the private sector into the matter, but they are already working. Yes, in this they, are issue. Wo they are working in this issue. Is it the limit them? Is still the bottleneck. But I can for, tell you. Sorry, please, for yes. the private partnership, even for them to assess the land is an issue. You must be connected up there before you can have access to the land. Okay. And for those that are opportune to have access to the land, access to funds too, loans. It's a problem. Okay. You still have to be connected up there. And that's why we want to plead with government of Nigeria. It is possible. It is achievable. Once the government is ready intentional. to... Yeah, to be intentional. 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 Well, I trust the leadership of our president, and I know that it's going to do something Things are going to it. change. I also want to appreciate NTA for bringing this rent and tenant issue yes, to it's a good it's initiative. a big so problem. Yes. Thank you very much, NTA, for doing this. Hmm. And uh, the, the issue of uh, uh, building materials, we have everything it takes for us to uh, bring out quality materials yeah, in this country. I mean, they're already doing that it in is PPP projects that are existing. Well, I, I don't think. Or it seems have done. I because, don't think. Because um, the engineer talked about something that uh, took off four years ago mm. or three years ago in the FCT until date has not been completed. But anyway, we have made our point. There's so many areas to, to, to look at now. I, we, everybody's talking about mortgage. And there are so many ways it can work. We know that there are bottlenecks, but people have been successful. Because we cannot say because you need connection, you need to make phone call, we all sit and wait. When the connection really comes, are we going to know? We will not know. So we need to keep trying. Mortgage works or does it? Mortgage it does. in Nigeria, it well, works? Well, it does. It does, but not for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. How can you... That's why we you, say... You, you it depends you on me. what you have. It depends on what you have. Or and who you know. Or who you know. You can't even assess mortgage if you don't even know how to go about it. You can't access mortgage when you don't have source of income. These are, the, that, these are the things that they look out for. It's just like when you go to get a loan, the bank will want to know what is the business you do. Okay. Can we see the, then, your then six I, I, Aside from that, even the, some of the most times when government decide to build for you, they use substandard material. So if you are buying a property for like 50 million naira, you still spend over 40 million naira to put it together because but we don't have uh, we don't have um authenticated information or research but to back up this statement you see you see <laughs> okay. them go because to some abandoned areas now you see all the houses already di dilapidated so if you are because buying 
because of the, the, the low the materials, quality materials. That were used. Yes. Okay, we're talking about um, empowering families in the wake of the housing crisis. Many say it's not new; it's been a gradual build-up. And many first took notice in the 1990s. Now it's uh, 2023, and we hear the gist, the research, the information it brings up is that 28 million Nigerians, or a bit more, are homeless. A break beckons. We'll be right back. When we have conversations on Weekend Deal, we have a goal to prefer solutions, to make all the parties involved, to be aware and be more enlightened of what is happening, what the real gist is, and that's what we're doing. And then with your participation and your input, we can together with the experts on ground prefer lasting solutions that will have the best impact on all of us. So don't stop sending in your messages. We're going to put out now. Let's talk about affordable and sustainable methods to get mortgages and financial assistance. Let's go there. Before I came to this place, it was hell. It was actually hell. Because uh, I know I, I already lived in two or three apartments where I pay rent. And in most cases, you always have issues with landlord. And you know, of course, as a civil servant, it is not easy paying rent. Civil servants, is difficult to save. So most times what we'll do is we'll enter into contributions. So as soon as I pick up that contribution, I just hand it over to my landlord to avoid the trouble. So it wasn't an easy task. But thank God that at the end of the day, God helped me to get this place. Considering the challenges faced by low-income families in accessing finance for rent, River State Government, as part of her social responsibility, has over time made efforts in providing housing for the low-income families. And this has been a continuous exercise based on a comprehensive planned program and policy. Private organizations have developed a scheme that provides rental subsidies amongst other forms of aid to housing in the city of Port Harcourt. As the developers, the uh, intention or one of the driving or the motive that brought us into real estate business is to handle and solve issues like this. Ensure that people that want to acquire properties, they do so with ease. So for the low income earners, there are a lot of uh, policies and strategies we've put in place to ensure that they are also carried along. Uh, for example, we, we have uh, properties below, below 1 million, 2 million. Those properties are acquired specifically to meet the demand of this uh, category of persons. And then you put them on promos on plans to extend the payment for such properties, sometimes two years, three years, four years. So to encourage people like that, we introduced uh, payment uh, plans like the pay small small, and we did that some years back. A lot of persons benefited from it, where you, you have to pay for a property for as long as uh, four years. You know, so these are plans embedded into a, a system to ensure that these people are carried uh, along. Some of these uh, quarters that are built by government are called owner occupiers. And it means that at the end of the day, when you retire as a civil servant, you own the place. And a, a certain amount of money agreed upon between government and those civil servants are being deducted from your salary. Unlike these ones that uh, at the end of the day, when you retire, you pack out of the place. And I use this opportunity to ask government to provide more accommodation for civil servants. In spite of the huge efforts of both government and private organizations to ease the challenge of housing in the state, the demand keeps increasing due to high rates of urbanization. It is therefore pertinent for all stakeholders to intensify efforts to address the imbalance in the housing provision for these target group. Interesting dimension, Potakot um, River State is giving us there. You know, civil servants, they, 
they are the platform, a very strong, reliable tripod platform, state, federal, that the government has relied on for many decades. We are amiable, unrelenting, committed, and loyal. And we do know what it will take or how well our work will be improved if more civil servants own their homes. It's either for they can do outright purchase, they can rent to own, or we explore and exploit the mortgage option. It's good to know that each German of her colleagues in River State have been successful, as have many other public servants in different parts of the country. Dr. Julie was talking about um, having an aside. Yeah. Does government work permit that? Of course. Oh, I know. My, my husband retired as a civil servant, and I was also a civil servant for 15 years before I left to, left become, to become an, an, entrepreneur. an entrepreneur. I know that in civil service, they have ample time to themselves. Some. Yes, majority of civil servants have a lot of uh, time to, 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 to spend. And you, you discover also that a job where two people supposed to do, they have about 20 people on the seat. In which public servant in is most that? Civil <laughs> <laughs> so they have time. So my own advice that is, is that. That is gist they... from you. Your gist, Dr. Julie, is your authentic. Maybe, maybe, maybe for you uh, uh, working here, but a lot of people I know. Maybe in I, some ministries. In some ministries. Hmm. So they should, they should try and have streams, other multiple sources. Streams yeah, of multiple income. streams of income. It will help them to uh, subsidize Save. what some money. the government is giving them. Because as a matter of fact, what civil servant earn is nothing to write home about. Mm. We work. have several cooperatives here and we have um, good stories to tell in that regard. So that's a solution that many of uh, many public servants can also explore. Mm. It just may work. Pick somebody who has uh, integrity. integrity. Let them be at the helm at the person that will keep that money. Yes, we have people with integrity. So also <laughs> do you have people with, uh, that are estate developers that are considerate? Yes. You, you had the last, the, the man in Port Harcourt saying that he is a private developer, they yes. build, and, and they give for as low, subsidized, as yes. give out at a subsidized and rate. And they kept saying low income, low income earners. They, okay. You know, they have a focus. What the low income earners should do too is to plan and budget for their spending. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that would take us to Lagos where someone is telling us, a financial expert is telling us that to own your home takes sacrifice, yeah. dedication, and commitment. Yeah. And you must be intentional. intentional. Lagos, continue. Yes. Having a roof over one's head is one of the basic needs of every human. However, providing these very important necessities requires great financial commitments and planning of one's income. Whatever is your income, you must make sure that you set aside part of it for the future of investment purposes. For a city like Lagos that is known to be densely populated, past and present administrations developed cost-effective housing projects that have provided sustainable housing options for low-income families. Examples of such projects are the Jakande Estates spread across the city. These projects have had great impact in providing housing solutions to families. I've been here like five years. Baja is doing a lot of job, you know, in terms of renovating the estate, turning to to new house. That's, a, that's a, it just like it just like it gave our our people as an opportunity. To realize individuals' housing dreams, financial experts suggest basic practical tips on financial planning and budgeting to navigate housing crisis. You don't have to start your first property development or property ownership in Ikoi. You can as well start in, uh, in uh, Ojudu, you, if you're in Lagos. Uh, if you're in Abuja, you can as well start in a place like Lugbe, uh, uh, Wagolada. So basic thing is that once you ha can save enough to buy land. I always have to look for a place that you can afford and get yourself land. Prudence and financial discipline are some of the attributes required to embark on achieving housing dreams. These experts advised on saving for housing and identified available financial resources to surmount housing challenges. It may be difficult for some 
families to access uh, financial access facility in financial institutions. But instead of that, there are other means like the cooperatives. People should make use of cooperative. Cooperative society is is trusted by the Federal Mortgage Bank, and so it allows them to be able to uh, give out some funds to finance uh, buildings and housing projects and so on. In case you're in paid employment and you're according to the National Housing Fund, you can actually take a, a, a mortgage loan from the National Housing Fund through any of the primary mortgage banks. Accessibility to these financial resources may sometimes pose some challenges. Experts further suggest other alternative financing models and partnership as a way out. Accessing uh, or, uh, homes may be very tough, may be very high for individual. But when we collaborate, two people can buy a house. Two families can buy a land uh, and then divide the land. On a half plot of land, you can build a bungalow. And you can, the two of you can buy a whole plot and then, and then divide it. The another thing is to also use the opportunity of uh, people that are doing installment payment for landed properties and so on like that. When you are building, you will learn one new thing. And that new lesson is every couple counts. So it enhances your discipline. And even the money you used to spend for your you find that you, and you can no longer afford it. So you realize that all your resources are channeled towards that objective of developing your own property. From the various advice and suggestions provided by experts, determination and financial discipline are key if every individual and low-income earners wish to realize their dreams of house ownership. You know, sometimes um, you see beautiful houses, you see pictures, and I've heard people say, in 10 years, I will have one like this. In five years, I will have one like this. From the way the person is talking, we sense that there is a high level of commitment, dedication, and the intent to sacrifice and be intentional about doing that. Yes. That is one of the key factors. In order to own a house of your own, you have to be dedicated. You have to make up your mind that I will not be a tenant forever. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have, you have to, you have to get, live in a, 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 get a, a housing accommodation that is equitable to your income. You don't live above your means. Indeed. You cannot be in Abuja and your salary is not up to a million and you are looking for houses somewhere in Asukuru or somewhere in Mekama. Well, I, I, had, I had a family that did that. The man was working in a bank and uh, he went and rented a place in Maitama, was paying 3.5 million naira every year. He lived in that house for seven years, and uh, they put their children in one my time school where they pay in dollars. Wow. When I heard it, I advised them, you know, you don't need to be, but because their friends are staying in that as is, they did that. Unfortunately for the man, he lost his job. Mm. Imagine paying 3.5 million naira for seven good years. That's, That's 24.5 million naira. The wife was not doing anything. The wife was just sitting at home. After he lost the job, he could no longer pay the rent. Two years, he could not pay the owner of the house. The landlord took him to court, ejected him. Right now, as I'm saying, the marriage is no longer in existence. The man has relocated the children to Calabar. Because so, of bad planning. Yes. Bad planning, yeah. Then bad another planning. instance is, it still deals with planning well. If you don't plan, well, you, you, then you are planning yes, to fail. Yes, planning to fail. For example, if, if you fail to plan, you, you, fail are, to planning plan, you to are planning to fail. fail. Let us begin to uh, surmise all we have discussed today and come to a conclusion. Let me start with you, um, Mr. Barista Imano. Imano. Thank you. Well, uh, getting housing accommodation is not easy, but it is paramount that everybody must be dedicated in order to attain that. You have to convince yourself that it is high in the city center. I should look for elsewhere outside the outskirts of the city center. Even Where if I, it's uncomfortable. Even coming if it's to uncomfortable work, coming yeah. to work. We manage it for we a while. We manage it for a while. Do you understand? Okay. Then for most tenants, looking at the tenant aspect, you don't just dumble into any property you see. Please 
ensure you ask for a draft copy of your tenancy agreement it is your right and even when you are a, a subsisting tenant and you renew your rent it is still your right to also ask for rent receipt mm -hmm. then you also have a right to enjoy the property without any disturbance from your landlord okay but remember that your landlord reserves the right to, to, to still enter your house to carry out inspection or carry out repairs hmm. Let's go to Yola. You know, Dr. Julie, you will round up. But let's go to Yola, where what we have been talking about takes center stage, about we knowing our rights, rights to own, rights to rent, alienable uh, human rights as a Nigerian, what we can get from our country. Let's go to Yola. There's more. The right to adequate housing is a fundamental human right and is described as one of the basic needs of a man. However, such rights have been unpopular among majority of Nigerians. As a Nigerian, do you know you have a right to housing? I don't know. I wouldn't lie to you. I don't know I have a legal like, right to that. Mm, no, I don't know. I don't know. I know about many housing schemes by the federal government, state government, but I don't know that it is actually a right for citizens. Housing rights are what we call proprietary rights. And uh, if you look at the provisions of our constitution, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, specifically section 43 and section 44. Section 43 is particularly concerned about the right of every Nigerian to acquire and own property everywhere in Nigeria. That is as a citizen, as of Nigeria, you have that legal right in the first place. If you are from Adamawa State, you can move to Lagos and freely own uh, what we call land of yourself because housing itself is a component that has to exist on land. So uh, at the heart of our legislation, we also have this right that have been made available to citizens of Nigeria. The United Nations Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights which is relevant to housing, enumerated seven functional parameters, which includes affordability, accessibility, habitability, service and infrastructure, legal security of tenure, location, and cultural adequacy. For most Nigerians, owning a house is almost unachievable because of the massive housing deficit, leading to increase in housing problems for families. The things are very hard. Some tenants, they find it difficult to pay their rent. And if you know, if you don't pay your rent, you definitely have issue with your landlord. To those who know their rights, they used to attend to the, the rent tribunal to seek for their rights. When you, a tenant, I mean, particularly feel aggrieved and take the uh, landlord to the house, I mean, um, what do we call it? Rent tribunal. Um, I think the court used to adjust and give everybody its own rights. Nigerian families, especially low-income owners, has the right to a lawyer that will represent him or her in the housing court. The right of a tenant begins where he paid his money as uh, agreed by his landlord. He moved into his, that apartment. From there, that property ceases to be the landlord's property. Why? Because he is a subsisting tenant. And any breach of any kind by the landlord, the tenant can seek for redress in court if there is any breach. And vice versa. The fact that you are a tenant in the premises, there are guiding principles, there are rules and regulations guiding your stay in that premises. There is also a help for Nigerians since the Legal Aids Council render legal services for free and in most instances, the services can be in form of arbitration. Regarding this issue of houses, uh, they are not issues that really court should entertain because courts decide cases in favor of one person and not both parties. But here, we can be able to sit and see that we make every person to at least have a victory. Both parties should be able to feel that yes, their right has been protected and they have been informed adequately regarding 
the way they should go about doing their activities without affecting the right of another person. Unless if we see that the other parties are not really willing to succumb to arbitration, then we can now set we will resort to court so that at least we fight it legally. The role of the government is important in providing this basic right. This can be done through law reforms, policies and programs on the right to housing, thus solving housing crisis for families. We've identified the challenge, indeed there's a housing crisis. What we're preferring now are solutions that will be long lasting and we have the best impact on Nigerians and Nigerian families. We're talking about um, empowering families. That has been our thrust. That has been our focus. We have um, had an engaging discourse. Wow. We've gone far. We went to areas that we never thought we would visit today in our discourse. You brought up uh, so much information. But as we wrap up, what many Nigerians are focused on now, we've heard the challenges. We've heard some of the limitations. We've heard what happened in the past. We've heard what's happening now. We want to be part of the future. And the future for many of them involves renting affordable property, built with good building materials, yes. or owning their own home, which is the final point for every Nigerian who's responsive to this discussion that we've had here today. Dr. Julie. Well, um, we've said almost everything. Families should be deliberate. They should cut down on their budgets and be focused on what they want to achieve. Okay, Barrister. Yes, I quite agree with uh, Dr. Julie. I want to also lend my voice to what she has said. Uh, the government, through its agencies, should also be more proactive. This issue of a building collapsing tomorrow, mm. building collapsing yesterday, whose fault is it? Is it not the fault of those that are supposed to go there and find out the quality of work that is being carried out? But when they go there and they see these things because they are professionals, but because they are compromised, yes. they tend to just uh, wave it and just wave walk it. Aside. So at the end, who is suffering? Even the, even the developer that has spent a huge amount of money mm -hmm. to rent such a structure will also be at loss. Yes, exactly. they had architect Mo and engineer Osamu Diame. They had their own ideas too. Architect Mo said we should look inward and use mass timber. It's a new dimension. She said we should use the earth. Don't call it mud, call it the earth. earth. Engineer, somebody talked about you containers if you are a young adult you just graduated you got your first job don't look to a big house three bedroom two bedroom mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. containers are upcoming we will get them they can be built to suit your taste and your affordability your out of pocket experience and then you can save and make necessary sacrifices so that one day you can own your home public servants look to cooperatives Let's pick people with integrity who we head those cooperatives, help us turn our resources to experts with hearts, yes. real estate experts with hearts who want to build for us. That's another lasting solution. Yes. And for you who have been a part of this program, it's always exciting and engaging to have your input here on Weekend Deal. Some families will be empowered in Nigeria. We will build, we will own, and there are so many options we can exploit and explore. Let's start to look inward. God bless Nigeria. One of us here is... Do we say bye-bye? Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.